so in the last session we have started aws databases right so in the aws databases first database we started which is called as rds right so which is totally based on the relational database that's why having a name is rds right so in the yesterday's session we learn what is the rds we saw a little bit things about rds in a theoretical way right so in today's session we are going to learn how we can use how we can handle the rds in a practical way right so before going to start the rds hands-on again i'm going to repeat you what is the rds why rds is required right so as i explained ki once we start with the aws right we are going to create an instance called as ec2 instance on the aws right means once you will create your aws account right obviously you are going to create your ec2 instance on that ec2 instance you are going to launch your applications or maybe your websites right as i explained ki suppose you are going to launch the Facebook website or you can say simple web.com website on your EC2 instance. Then what will happen? As you know, simple web.com is a static website. So what is meant by static website? If we are not going to do any login, we are not going to submit any username, password. If we are not going to download anything, we are not going to upload anything. Then this page is called as a static page or this website is called a static website. Means what I want to say, see, in the Amazon S3, we have launched a static website, right? Means we are we were just printing hello world or hello, this was my this is my first website. We print the statement, right? So what is this? This is the static website. So what I want to say, once we create the AWS account, once we create the EC2 instance, on that EC2 instance, either we are going to launch a static website or a dynamic website as per the user or as per the client requirement. So in the dynamic dynamic website, I give an example of Facebook. In the Facebook, once you create the account, you will get a username, password. You are going to upload your profile picture, upload your information. You are going to post some information, right? And lots of things. So we are going to download. Then we are going to upload. We are going to some get information, put information. So this thing is happen static. So this thing is happen dynamically, right? And once you are launching a dynamic website on your EC2 instance, who will handle that dynamic process? It means suppose you are the user, you are creating your Facebook page, you are creating your uh, Facebook account, right? You will get your username. You are going to create your username. So where that username will store, where that password will store, where your profile picture will store, where your post will store, where your likes, comments, your recommendation, your post, where we can store that information or where AWS will can store that information. This was the question, right? That's why we require some databases. What we require? We require some databases. We require some storage, right? That's why this AWS databases concept come into the picture. Got it. So for that purpose, I explain, we have a relational databases in the market, right? It may be a MySQL, it may be a Postgres SQL, it may be a Oracle, it may be a SQL Server and so on. So these are the relational databases. Got it. So these relational databases we required on that EC2 instance. So once you launch your Facebook website, right? With the help of a relational database, you are going to store your data into the database storage. Perfect. So what we are going to do for that purpose, we are going to connect our EC2 instance with the RDS instance. For that purpose, I explain what is the RDS. RDS is depends on the relational databases. Got it. So that's why it is called as RDS. So what is the RDS? RDS is also one kind of instance, right? So what is instance? You know, instance means we are just creating our own virtual machine. Similarly, your RDS is also one instance means we are going to create our own virtual machine. And in that virtual machine, all the relational databases are available, right? According to our need, we can use that relational databases. Got it. As well as when we are creating the RDS instance, they will AWS will ask you how many storage you require. So according to our need, we are going to take the storage also. Means everything is available on the RDS means AWS is providing one platform in that platform storage is available in that platform relational databases is available that's why RDS is also called as platform as a service RDS is also called as platform as a service right means simple when your application server is going to response you your username your password passbook your profile picture and everything then the application server wants to connect with your RDS instance because on the RDS your relational databases are available your all the database storage is available right that's why we need to learn what is the RDS and how RDS database is going to help to the AWS if anybody asks the question in the interview have you worked on the RDS you can simply say yes then they will ask you for what purpose you use, you use RDS. You can simply give the example. We launched application on the EC2 instance. That application was the dynamic application. If we want to handle the dynamic application, then we require supporting database. So AWS is providing a different kind of supporting database. Out of that, we use relational database, which is called as RDS. So RDS is also one instance. It simply it, it means simply we are creating a virtual machine. The AWS is providing everything on that RDS. So platform is available. We are simply using that platform. We are just associating that platform with our EC2 instance. That's why this is also called as platform as a service. And once our application server is connected with RDS, we can easily handle a dynamic request. It may be upload data, it may be a download data, or it may be a post anything, right? We can handle this information and this information will store into the database and RDS is providing a lot of a database storage as per our needs, right? That's why we selected a database, which is an AWS database called as relational database. It's called as RDS. Hope so. You got the theoretical idea. What is RDS, right? There are different kinds of relationships. There are different kinds of AWS databases. It may be Aurora. It may be a Redshift, right? So it may be Kinesis. It may be RDS. There are different kinds of, you can say, AWS databases. We have just started the first database having name is RDS.